Hi, everyone. Uh, in this session, uh, Mahdi and I are going to continue our journey from we started all the way from the storage, you know, a storage broker, we built a foundation service and then a controller to add a new post. And now we're going to take this to the end of the line, basically integrating this API endpoint with a Blazor based enterprise level web application that can basically withstand higher number of people being able to kind of use the system and consume it. And as usual, I'm joined by my dear friend Mandy here today. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi, Mandy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, he's he's going to be working with me today just to give people a little bit of visual. And this is really important so people understand what where have we been and where we headed. Um, you know, I'm going to share my screen here real quick just so people see what I'm talking about. But more importantly, I want you guys to focus on, you know, where what's what's our roadmap, right? What's our roadmap? So we talked about having a social media platform, right? You have a database and then you have a broker. That's your storage broker and your storage broker talking to the database. And then we built a foundation service and this foundation service talks to the broker. And then we built an API controller. And this API controller basically is taking care of exposing you know the the, the 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 functionality to the outside world so here's my database and then here is let me okay. give the focus here and then you have your storage broker and then you have your foundation service and now we have our controller which is our api now Mahdi and I went through all of this and we have successfully implemented it it's time to jump into the other side of things the other, the other side of this journey is to be able to go and say, I want to build, you know, the integration aspect of this. So I need an API broker, right? It's not storage anymore. This is an API broker. And this API broker will call that API endpoint that Mahdi created. And then there is a foundation service. And then there is a view service in front of this. And then at the very end here, there is two things. There is a component. This is what we call component. And this component intersects with two things. It basically calls something called base component. This is the UI aspect of this. This is base, base component. And then at the top here, there's something called page. So a component is the intersection between the data layer and the UI layer. And we're going to be doing all of this together in this session. So if you look at the larger scheme of things here, let me highlight this. This is going to be the one that's in progress right now. But if I put this in uh, better words, you can see that there are two systems, two repositories here. There is the front end and the back end. And the back end is the part where Mahdi basically started building in the, you know, the broker and all the tests, all the, the sessions that we have been doing so far. Now it's time for the front end piece. And the front end piece is something that we call Ta'arafu Web. This is Ta'arafu Ta'arafu Web. Ta'arafu Web is a completely different animal, different beast. You know, it's a completely different code base. And this code base basically allows us, this is Ta'arafu Core in here. And the naming convention is really, really important. If you're building a portal for an enterprise, you call it portal. If you're building, you know, whatever you're building in your space. So we're done with this piece here. This is truly, when, when people tell you full stack end-to-end -end development, that's literally what we're doing here. We're building standardized software all the way from the back end and then we're going out there and building the front end aspect of it and this front end aspect of it is really really important because that's how you're going to expose your your capability in the future what we're going to do it's going to look a lot like this you're going to take this guy like this like this and there will be something else that we will be doing here which is as you might guess it can you guess what this guy is maddie any 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 wild guesses orchestration we will no. have no no this here is going to be tarafu mobile uh-huh and tarafu mobile is basically your ability to be able to go build you know mobile applications you know very similar capability view service foundation api integration very very similar except that this is exposed to the web and this is exposed to a mobile application instead of you know, you still have components, base components and all that, but it's structurally tiny bit different, you know, based on the architecture. And I'm going to introduce you to something called uh, .NET MAUI. I don't know if you heard about this. .NET MAUI yes. is our ability to basically exchange Blazor components and be able to run it in the mobile development. So this is basically going to be our journey, and we're going to do this over and over and over again. Anybody who is able to write the data, 
the brokers, the foundations of a controller, and then build the infrastructure of this, right? There's no infrastructure yet. We're going to talk about that, Maddie. And then being able to build this, this, this is in my book. The, these people are what I call an engineer, right? So you go from coder. Just the fact that you built all of these together, you should be pumped up real quick to a programmer level because you have these. You just need an infrastructure and data. You need to do data migration task and an infrastructure task and a provision task. And I'm going to show you how to do all of these. They're very simple, not that, not, that, not really that hard. And then there is the UI. And today in this map, we're starting with this piece here. We, gonna, we built an API broker that we can communicate with. If you guys remember last time, let me share my screen here and show you you know what Mahdi did. This is the beauty about building, um, um, uh, you know, standardizing your code, and even you know the commitment that you're making in your code has to be also standardized. Um, what you can do here is that when Mahdi committed his pull request, so this is Tarafu uh, Tarafu core here. If you look at the pull requests, the things have been merged in here. So this here is Ricardo. And then if you look at the controller, see that post being able to post that? We will be able to leverage that endpoint this time to allow our UI to be able to integrate with that. So without any further ado, now we understand where we are on the map. You know, uh, building an API integration is really, really simple. You know, let's go ahead, go ahead, Mahdi, share your screen, create a new branch, uh, call it brokers slash uh, sorry uh, user slash user id slash brokers dash posts dash post go ahead Users. share your screen yep yep mm -hmm. okay done user. all right and uh, slash brokers no dash dash uh, yeah slash brokers yeah, yeah you're right sorry brokers dash posts dash post mm -hmm. okay create okay and mahdi you are uh are you a did i add you as a contributor on this project i don't think so okay now let, let me add you uh let's see here you are mahdi Mahdi, a guy. Well, well, then you're gonna have to reclone because okay, uh, is, uh, what's your what's your username? It's M E H. No, it's C A. C A. C A. Uh -huh. C T I seventy nine. Seventy nine. Okay, got it. Okay, so I just sent you an invitation. And I want you to kind of uh, pull in from master the Hassan slash Tarafu web in order for you to be able to kind of push directly to a branch where we can pair and all that. Uh, should I reclone it or non it? No, because because you, you are a contributor, official contributor on the project, so you don't have to clone anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, done. I accept that. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Now go ahead and pull pull that master branch, pull that Hassan Habib slash Tarafu web, and um, let's see if that if that works for you. Again, hmm. reuse package manager, package manager. Okay. I have to activate it like this. I have no idea why mm -hmm. I have this problem here. Objects reference. No, it's not gonna work. The git here. Object reference is not set an instance. Remote. Mm -hmm. Let me git pull. Upstream. The name is main, right? Yeah, I think so. 
Or no, yeah, it is main actually. Yeah. I will get an error. Why? That's okay. Let me let me try to kind of walk people through this this time, and then we can we can figure this out later. Since we, uh... I I will I will reclone it. I think maybe. That's fine. Okay, we can do that later. Let's let's just do the broker for now. I just want to show you how this works, and then you can we gonna do more and more of them next times. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me let me go over here and let me share Visual Studio. Here we go. So here's Tarafu, right? I basically have have the latest main, you know, if you can see my screen here, Mahdi. And um, what I'm going to do here, there's already something that's set up. I want to walk you through this session so just, just to understand, you know, what we're doing here. You know, there is something called a library called RESTful Sense, right? And this library, um, uh, RESTful Sense, uh, is basically a library that allows us to easily make api calls right so very easily here you can make api calls so you can see you know this is api client this api client takes in a restful api factory and it goes and makes these calls right exactly. in the in the ye olden days when i first implemented this i used to go and do this this stuff here this is all bad why is this bad because every broker should own its own configurations Every broker should own its own configurations. What that basically means is that instead of doing this, instead of doing this stuff, what we're going to do is that we're going to go and initialize and take in the configuration as input parameter to our broker. So see how, how our broker here is, is working like this? We're going to change that a little bit, right? So what are we going to do? We want to go and say, instead of, instead of being fed the restful factory restful api factory because now your system knows about it and your system is not supposed to like outside of this broker your system is not supposed to know about any of that right so what are we going to do about that uh, we're going to go like this and say okay in order for this to work i need to be able to pass in the what do you think the configurations right configurations configurations yeah what else do i need to pass in what do you think else i need to pass in hmm configuration and something that's common across the system which is something called the HTTP it's client clients yes I remember right so private read only right HTTP client HTTP client is not does not have an interface it's a, I think it's already an abstract library so sorry abstract type so we can't actually do much with this other than just using it as is so let's just go here and say using you know here's system.net client and I'm going to go here and say HTTP client. Are you with me? Yes. So this is that part. Okay. So that means this restful API client is not going to be injected anymore because we're going to be building it internally in our system, right? What that means is that I'm going to take get in an HTTP client as an input parameter and I'm going to be getting I configuration along with this. Like both of these are being passed in from from the startup CS. So both of these are coming from startup CS. Okay. Now, what am I going to do? Something very simple. I'm going to go first in here and say assign that HTTP client to HTTP client. This is so easy. That's how I'm going to build things. The second thing in here, I'm going to go at the very bottom here and build a private iRistful I -Ristful API factory client. And I'm going to call it get. Yeah, I'm going to go and, and say just get API client. Initialize is fine too. You can use either terms of those. This guy needs a configuration to be able to work with the stuff that we're doing here. So this is I configuration in here. Why do we need the configuration? Why do you think we need that configuration for? Mm. Mm. Because it will make, because it should be separate and uh, how how we read URL. The main, exactly. Main. Exactly. Where am I supposed Maybe. to get the URL from, right? Yes. So I can go here and say, this is my local configurations like this. And I'm going to go like this and say configuration dot configuration dot, right? And then we can go and say get local configurations just like this. What is this guy doing? It's looking at this configuration that I have in here, this configuration here. And it's basically saying map this to a strongly typed model. Map this to a strongly typed model. So if you look at my models here, you'll see API configuration, which has URL. 
And on the outside, I have this API configuration, which matches exactly API configurations URL. So far, so good, right? Yes. Okay, let's go back here and let's do this. Let's go back in, the, in this guy. So I have the configuration here. Now, what else is left for me to make this work? I can go down here and say, okay, let's get the API URL. This is API base URL. Okay, where is that coming from? Local configuration dot. API configuration dot URL. So far, so good, right? Because this is mapped out of that file. Yes. And now I can assign this to the HTTP client and say HTTP client dot base address equal new URI. Look, look, look. New URI like this. And this is API base URL. API. API base URL. So this is me setting up the base address on this HTTP client to be able to take that base API URL as a part of the configuration. So far, so good. What's left for me is just to go here and say return new RESTful API client yeah. factory and pass in this .http client. Done. Okay, so now I have that. I can go up here and say, well, this .api client equals get right get api client with the configurations done so now i don't need that piece in here completely like the piece about adding where is startup cs in here i don't need that piece completely are you with me so so what that basically means is that i can uh, i can go here and say you know okay i added all of these things and I also, uh, you don't need that logger anymore. So we can here go and say services.add logging. That's one. And also you can go and say services.add HTTP client. Done. See how much cleaner this is? You don't have to worry about I RESTful API or any of these instantiations at all. All right. So far, so good. So I have all of this in place. This is great. Now I can go now. Let's run a quick cleanup in here just to make sure everything is good and dandy. There you go. And then I can go here and basically make a smaller commit. So we can make a new branch. So I say users, Hassan Habib slash brokers dot, right, post dot post. Okay. Now, so here's brokers, right? I'm going to go here and say config, config, and then, you know, uh, localize. API configuration. All right, so far so good. Now what's left for me? What's left here is for me to go and say, okay, I have, I already have API broker post, posts. I'm just gonna go up in here and say value task, right? I'm gonna go and say post, and I'm gonna go and say post, post, post async. And this guy is gonna take a post as an input parameter. So this is me integrating the API with 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 the broker and then the implementation of this is for me to go and say well that's easy i can go up in here and say public async value task and that's a post and i can go here and say post post async it'll take in post as input parameter and then it's going to go up in here i don't even need to do anything i can just go like this and say await this dot post right post async. async right and then i can do the post here you can use that type negotiator here to kind of determine what do you want to return uh this guy here wants let's see here mahdi i think it's post content uh, no it's post async post async like this and we want to basically go and say okay what's my relative url that's your relative url and there's the post done now let me ask you a question are we going to put a try catch in here Aren't we supposed to put a try catch in here? No. Why? How come? Because we are in a broker level and it should mm. be it should be uh we handle try catch in the service foundation. Exactly. Level. This is just a, a very thin layer to connect and integrate our core business logic, whether it's a UI or an API, whatever the case may be, with with the outside world. That's all. So, so what does that mean? That basically means, you know, we can now post posts asynchronously straight to, to the API. Now, all I have to do is just go and commit this. I'm going to go here and say brokers, post, 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 all uppercase, post, post, 
Um, that's it, post post. So I'm just going to go up in here and let's go and create a PR for this and see what that looks like. So let's go up in here. Let's go here. Let's go to the wanted to do from your side. Mm. Let me check. Okay, some processing. Mm -hmm. Let me go to brokers API. Okay, broker post. Interesting. Hmm. It's do the syncing, but let me try one okay. more time. All right. While you're doing that, I'm just looking real quick at anything that we might have missed here. I think this is good. Services add logging. We kind of cleaned up things a little bit. I think we are good to go, my friend. Okay. I'll merge that in, Maddie. Merge that PR in. All right. Okay, time for you. Any questions about any of that? So far, so good we are. We are in a good level. Okay, so that means that part about the integration with the API broker, and don't worry, you're going to have the, we haven't done the retrieve by ID. We haven't done the delete. We're going to need all of these, right? So, you know, you're going to do one, Ricardo is going to do one, and you're going to have the entire experience end to end. What really matters, though, you know, they're going to be a couple of concepts that we're going to be learning about. There's one concept that is about the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the concept of uh, Euclid's, Euclid's um, uh, law of axioms, where he determines that things are equal to the same thing, are equal to each other. We're going to learn a little bit about that in the view services. But additionally, there will be also the part about a, you know, understanding why we need view models, that that model view, view model, the conversion, and then our ability to be able to build a UI component that can visualize all of this, including the exceptions that may occur. See, all these exceptions that you worked with me on, you know, including but not limited to, you know, the validation exceptions, the errors that are coming in. And I'm hoping with this series, there will be a new standard change when it comes to our UI models. I want, you see these validation errors that you're showing as problem detail. We're going to take these problems and, you know, pluck the, uh, sorry, uh, uh, put them on the controls. So if you have a di if you have a dialogue like this and you have a title and maybe an, uh, a text box or whatever the case may be, if there's an error, we need it to show on that box. So it comes all the way from the API. It travels all the way up you know, to the UI and, and back and forth. And it's going to have a proper language. It's going to have much, much better details than than what any system is presenting today. Okay. So, uh, go ahead. I have a question uh, here. Go ahead. Uh, what if we want to, like, make a, something, add one, one functionality? Mm. For example, for, uh, for the guy mm -hmm. who has, like, 100 posts, mm -hmm. we will, like, uh, give him a promotion. Right. Should we do it in an API level, in a core level, or we will handle it in the web? So, so, so the rule is simple. You you want to keep your you want to keep your portal as dumb as possible. It doesn't do any logic. Why? Always think of it this way. If I were to have multiple UIs, like a mobile app and a web app, am I gonna be repeating my business logic? If the answer is yes, and your clients that you're repeating your business logic, then you definitely need to push that downstream to to the API. Mm. Does that make sense? This is the golden yes. rule. The rule here, like for instance, where do we, let me ask you a question. Here's a question for you. Where do we determine, where do we determine whether the date is recent or not of the post that is being posted? Where do we validate that? Uh, test is a... Uh... Like, like where do we put the business rule the logic that validates that the date service of the post, validation service validation where which service where does it live which component which which system does it live in back end front end it's in the back end in the back end okay yes. now here's another question for you right now where do i put the logic that deter that determines that determines whether i need to display the localized exception or the categorical exception to the end user? Where do I put that logic? For the exceptions? Yeah, so that your exception has a message, right? It, there is an outer exception, which is categorical. 
and then there is inner exception which is localized so post validation exception and then there is invalid post exception right yes each one of them has a message right where does the logic around displaying determining which message to display to the end user should live should it live on the api or should it live it in the portal on both of them where should we did, do, put that i think we can do it in the both because uh no just in the api no it's gonna be on the portal because you're displaying it to the end user displaying you're showing it to the end user right so you have the whole exception in your hand and you're determining which logic you need to display i don't worry about that we're going to run into this you're going to build this so many times that you yourself will be able to come in and say maybe we can do this in a better way what's really excited about this is that in this series we will be able to talk about and determine details such as you know how do we add in a particular validation error like sometimes you get three or four of these how are you going to display those in what we call a validation component and that validation component can be put under a fixed box can be put under a date time box whatever the case may be does that make sense yes all right any more questions no perfect so far so good all right tomorrow we start building the foundation service for uh, uh adding a new post right and you will see now the difference between building a foundation service in an API versus building it on a portal client. They have similarities, but they also have differences. And I can't wait to show you how that turns out, my friend. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much, Maddie, for coming in today. Thank you all for You're watching. Welcome. And, and uh, I'll Let's see you in another pushing. video. All right. Take care, man. Thank, thank you, you for guys. watching. Thanks.